Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at the Tier 10 American Light Cruiser Wooster. We are on the map north. The build is on the screen. I haven't played this ship in a while, but this is the same sort of build I've had, with the exception being I used to have my Wooster Commander also be my Massachusetts, my Atlanta, in advanced firing training to extend the range of my AA guns. Obviously, that skill is no longer useful, so I had to you know, make an own unique commander just for the Wooster, and this is what I came up with. It isn't sexy, it isn't crazy, this is exactly as you would expect. IFHE, concealment, and using all of your tools as effectively as you can. I love Jack of All Trades on cruisers that have a ton of consumables because the improvement is across all of them. Now, just before this game, I was playing multiple times on the stream, and I was just dying to stupid things, moving forward too fast, trying to get too much on the map without enough information to do so. In this game, I decided, okay, I'm just going to slowly progress, and I'm just going to be that constant harassment available. This requires that my teammates go out and spot for me. First teammate the friendly Z-46, I believe, or the Z-52, one of those German ships. He's out front, and he's spotting a gearing, and the gearing pops a smoke. The friendly DD is also firing his guns, and I don't want him to be in a position where he feels like no one's trying to contribute. I want to try and contribute. I feel like it's in our best interest to always try and assist a teammate in a 1 vs. 1 or a 1 vs. 3. You know, depending on how many enemies can actually engage him and deal damage to him, it's not good that he's almost dead. So hopefully my gun systems would discourage the aggressive play that the gearing may or may not have wanted to do. However, note where I am on the map as I'm trying to harass this gearing, and I don't regret this at all because DDs are awful, um, I think he actually doesn't have Last Stand activated. Now, it's either a combination of he didn't take a commander with last stand, or he has a commander and he's retraining it. Regardless, effectively he was dead in the water. And for the, the amount of time that he was dead in the water, we didn't do enough damage. But now I'm in a really tough spot. Remember, I told myself I was not going to move forward and take unnecessary damage. But here we are. We are very forward. Multiple enemies who cannot take damage have free fire on me, I have to do something drastic. And the thing that I chose to do, hold my fire, put out any fires that may extend my, my uh, detection, and then back up. And use that really great concealment that the American Light Cruisers are known for, especially for the amount of damage output they can do. I'm just trying to look around. I'm not really seeing the, the teammates that I want on this flank, considering there's so many enemies. So I'm just going to use my speed. I'm going to disengage. I'm going to use this gap where the Prince Eugen almost was going down. And I'm going to turn and run away. If I get a chance to fire in a safer position, I will absolutely do that. I have no problem firing when I'm retreating in something like this because it is a light cruiser. It is maneuverable. But first, let's dodge out of the way of, uh, I think, the gearing torpedoes. Now, I guess I could have turned on Hydro if I you know, saw one torpedo in an effort to protect myself, but I was, I was pretty confident that if I aligned my ship with it, I should be able to avoid it. Now, this Prince, I think he pulled a hard Notzer. We blew up his torpedo. Someone else blew up his ship, and oh gosh, we have a North Carolina incoming. We've got broadside shots from multiple enemies being really annoying. Oh, Grozo Void, can you just leave me alone? AP on my broadside. Not the best if I'm actively maneuvering. But I don't blame him for sticking with it because there's not as many targets that AP is super useful on. So a light cruiser, eh, if he angles just slightly one way or another, then we can pin. My, my goal was not to angle flat and allow everyone to pin me. My goal was to retreat get over to the island area, and then fire on something like the North Carolina. Some ship that is, you know, pushing forward rapidly. I think I can do pretty good damage against him without taking too much. And while all that's going on, my team has already captured the east side of the map. 
the enemy is sort of getting boxed in and oh multiple torpedo hits can this be it is he going to flood out he is absolutely on fire and he is flooding so i don't know if he has a chance to stop it i would have already stopped it if he had i'm, I'm gonna assume he's just gonna die but he is not the only target that we have to worry about we have the bismarck on approach and we actually get the last damaging shell on the target. As he's ticking both the flood and the fire tick, we were able to finish him. But the Bismarck moving forward. Friendly sends torpedoes at the Bismarck. The Bismarck may be using his Hydro. So I need to try and contribute more significantly and hopefully weather whatever storm is coming with this, this Bismarck. Because it does look like he may be interested and actually doing something, but I, I he definitely sees those torpedoes to dodge. But I don't think he can, yeah, one hit right on the nose. That one definitely caused the flood. It had to. There's no way it didn't. And we get a third fire on the target. Oh, man. He is on fire. Three sources. He's also flooding, I believe. Although it, it does seem like he's not, and I'm looking for that fourth fire. Yes, I'm that evil. I want his entire deck to be burning. We have 32 millimeters of pen, so if I locate my shells accurately, I'm not losing out on any damage. That's what I always, you know, look at it as this way. And who's going to get the last tick? We do not. The Seattle gets a shell on him. Sort of payback for the weird shell finisher that we did previously. And boy... That enemy push on the western flank really stalled out. I think their problem was they didn't work together. They sort of went one by one by one by one. And I, along with my teammates, could engage the targets at will without risking too much. Because most of the enemy wasn't even in range to engage all but you know one or two. So as long as we just kept up our fire and fire freely, I didn't really have to worry about actively maneuvering all that much. But it did look pretty hairy there. I, I was just a little too far forward. And if I wouldn't have gotten the benefit of my teammates sort of distracting the enemy and the enemy not pushing forward in that moment where I was detected, I may be dead. And this could be a very different game. Because, let's be real, I do a ton of damage to a lot of targets when left alone. I'm already up to 90,000 damage. And it's been eight minutes in the game, and we started out with basically 5,000 points of damage for the first five minutes. So in, in the time span of four minutes, we've done 85,000 damage between all the fires and the, just the shell. It's really nice. It's really convenient. But it's not going to exist forever. And is the North Carolina going to try and ram the Henri? I think the Henri is going to try and torp him. Oh, he's going to torp him all right. And I couldn't keep him alive. Gosh, the Henri. They're so fast. I have to give so much lead if I intend to dodge his shell. And, it, you know, it's it's way easier for him to give the appropriate lead for me than it is for my ship to do the same to him. So, thankfully, friendlies were able to finish him off. And we've got the Bogami. Plus, what looks like a Montana is pushing up. Now, I noticed that this Z-42, or Z-52, sorry, he was camping in smoke, and I wanted to use my cursor to verify that he was within my radar. I saw him fire, I confirmed that on the mini-map, and then I used radar. And for whatever reason, he is not sailing a inch forward, or a millimeter back. He's just sitting there and taking tons of broadside. Well, guess what? We're a light cruiser. We're made to kill you guys. You can't do that. You can't just stay stationary when a light cruiser or a Des Moines or you know, something with a rapid firing gun with radar chooses to spot you. You're just going to die. Radar's ending. The Montana is spotted. I think he was spotted, yes, regardless of radar. And I'm just going to try and rotate around and go after his back end. There are some torpedoes in the water, and it looks like the Grozo Voy is going to be in trouble from friendlies. But that gearing, the gearing sort of torped the, the northern half of the western side. Where could he be? I don't have radar for a minute 30, and I would love to deal with him, but I just don't have a real good idea. 
His last known position? He ain't nowhere near that. We know that. That last known position was on the southwest side of the map. There's no way his torpedoes would ever even reach. So he's clearly way far forward. Probably escorting the Mogami. Maybe in between the Mogami and the Montana. That would be my guess. No one has an idea that I'm doing exactly this play. Now I do have an option here. I could choose to keep the island blocking. And to just fire on the Mogami while the Montana continues to move forward. I kind of wanted to kill the, Mo the Montana more though. And I just wanted to punish his booty. Because I can punish his booty all day with these light cruiser guns. 32 millimeters is not enough. And it's a surprisingly low damage zone, so it always ends up giving me a, a boost in damage output for a short time while that section is absorbing the damage. We've got uh, one fire on the target. Looks like... Did the fire on the back... Is, is this a legendary module? Montana? His fires seem to be going out pretty quickly. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He has to fire at me. I will just out DPS his life. I am a light cruiser. It rapidly comes to a very quick end when a light cruiser is firing on yourself or something like this. We capture the base. All base are captured. And just trying to finish them off. I would love the kill. Oh, I would love the kill. I'm trying to hit all of my shells on the superstructure. And okay, there we go. Good, good, good. That's our third kill. Got a Mogami openly firing on me. There is a fire on my ship, but I don't really want to use my damage control. I feel like the only way I can lose is if a torpedo ends me. I can't lose if a single fire burns on me. So I'm going to allow it to burn, heal back up for it, and keep that damage control just in case. Because both the Mogami and the gearing have torpedoes that can reach me. So just keep that all in mind when you're doing something. You can't just ignore the signs. But I do decide to use Hydroacoustic. That is a great first step. Honestly, I could use a combination of putting the fire out, making sure Hydroacoustic was up in order to protect myself. I, I sort of double dipped. Didn't really have to do both together, but because I did, I was able to easily avoid pretty much everything. And that's the way the game ended. Unfortunately, we missed out on the Kraken Unleashed, but I was really happy with the Wooster. Honestly, it made me miss my Wooster. I was like, man, it's a good ship. I should play it more. And I'm, I'm, I'm certain that it's a really great ship against enemy aircraft. So four kills, 181,000 damage done, 16 fires, Confederate. And as far as my base XP, we're 2,222. Am I a salesman or something? That's a, such a specific number. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing the Wooster. I hope you all have a lovely day. And I'll catch you next time.